To get an opportunity to get on one of these projects, you know, it's a massive opportunity for me. As soon as I heard of it, I thought I want to go for it. I mean, it's an ideal opportunity for younger guys. I mean, yeah. keeps me here like 10 years, I've done 27, but for you guys, yeah. the project spending 22 million pounds is like major. I'm majorly proud of it. I mean, my mates give me a lot of stick over it because I mention it quite a lot. <laughs> like, I'll mention it like, oh, bloody hell, Heineken again, <laughs> all the time. But I am, I'm really proud. Like, they, they put a lot of trust in us, really. The project is actually split into two, so we've got line 18 and line 17. So line 18, we're going to remove uh, the high cone machine and the uh, TSP, which is the train shrink pack, and we'll reintroduce two cardboard lines. And on line 17, we're going to remove the high cone machine, replace it with a cardboard black cut machine. Not only are we looking at moving away from plastic, we're also looking at the energy that these machines use and trying to do energy reduction. So we're trying to streamline the process and really cut out all the extra, so even in terms of printing. So it's not just reduction of plastic, but we've done so many other energy saving initiatives around the line. So we start off with the initial discussions. So if you see where we started and where we're at, you have two totally different, completely different plans. We just thought of so many different things to do. So we've started off with a line layout that we've completely rejigged based on what the operators and the crafts and the shift managers wanted. It's my responsibility as part of this project to deliver something that the operators can work in. So what we're going to deliver is new LED lighting to give the lux levels to the correct level. We're going to put a new hygienic flooring system in. From where we started to where we are now, everything's changed. Everything's changed. It's constantly like just kind of learning, developing, and also learning from our peers because we're not the only site that's moving away from secondary plastic packaging. So it's also learning from Tadcaster and Hereford and what they're doing in Europe as well. operators saw the machines, they were really quite involved, they had so much input into it. Uh, it couldn't come quick enough for us really. I think after we spent sort of like six six weeks in the room uh, looking at the manuals and stuff, a lot of the manuals were very generic. It was a really good opportunity to be hands-on, uh, take the covers off, inspect and have a look at these areas that we're looking at and just feed our appetite for the work we were doing really. You get to ask the, the manufacturers questions on why, why is that there, why is that working and What's, what's that doing? What, what, what purpose has it got? Why is it going to make it better for us? So what happened first um, was the removal of the high code on line 18. So that high cone is so old, it's a museum piece, but it was seeing that high cone just get moved away and just seeing all that equipment removed, it's just, it's a totally different packaging plant even with nothing there. So yesterday the mead was getting moved, apparently it's been moved three times in its life. It is so old, so mead have told us that it is the second oldest machine that they have in their entire company. I was just saying I'm worried about the mead moving. Who's worried? I am. Why? What if it doesn't turn back on? I have confidence. <laughs> it's old. You've it's seen it move it. three yeah, times. Old wiring. You, old you can't move old things that many times. You should know that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just pulling it. Yeah, watch them in a minute. They'll pull it. It's on dollies. Um, I think the biggest concern was watching it go through two pillars and watching it pivot or being forced to pivot and I'm thinking, holy crap, what's going to fall apart? It's going to hit both posts and just kind of collapse. Oh, it just snaps in the middle of what bit sticks. It's not funny. It was good to see the spiral going yesterday. Uh, myself and Ryan were looking at that. It was um, interesting to see the new lubrication points we're going to have there. We've got some clear standards on the on the actual spiral that we've got a chance to have a look at. This is the, uh, the new spiral. The new spiral. Um, got the infeed section at the bottom, and then we've got the lubrication points underneath. Good, that's good. Good, for that. 
We've also um, managed to get the medium to position. The conveyors are, are, are rapidly being installed. They should be finished by tomorrow evening, Friday evening, which is on track. We've got the outages planned in for next year. We've got the training planned in for next year. So, so far, we don't see any issues with what's going to happen. We know when it's coming and how it's going to happen. And so far, there's been no hiccups. So are you ahead of schedule then? Ah, uh, no, dates and times. I will never admit to being ahead of schedule, you Tika. <laughs> no way. So, yeah. You know how you love dates and times and commitment. Yeah, well, no. We're all right. We're on track. That's my commitment. We're on track.